YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back a day away from the NFL draft here with the latest rumors and buzz from legit sources we even talk about some veterans that could be traded during the NFL draft make sure you join us for our day one live stream covering the draft right here on YouTube and then for day two and three on Twitter with rumors pick analysis and a lot more uh, links been in the comments for any of that but uh, the latest on the commanders in the second overall pick still expected to go Jaden Daniels and there is a quote from a source from a team from multiple teams, but one specifically saying that it would be an upset if Jaden Daniels did not go second. And this was from ESPN. Uh, but so it, teams are expecting Jaden Daniels to be the pick. So it seems to be likely even after it kind of being clear Daniels would prefer to play for the Raiders. Even the Vikings have been brought up, but he's good with playing for the commanders. It's really not what you want to hear if you're watching and do they change their plan. It's kind of hard to change your plan. If you did this whole process and you narrowed it down to this guy, it's kind of hard to change your plan. So again, expected to be an upset if they don't go with Daniels, but there's always been major surprises in the NFL draft. I also heard that JJ McCarthy is a number two option. It almost sounds like smoke, but at the same time, the Bears are going to take Caleb Williams, so the commanders don't really need to blow smoke. So could that be the truth? It is a little surprising that Drake May would be their third option then when a lot of us, you know, including myself, think they should take May number two, and some people may think that's still a possibility. Kind of like myself too. Like, I, like it's almost, how could you not take Drake May? Like, I feel like it's a perfect fit. He has the most upside in the class, but uh, it sounds like they like McCarthy, but not as much as Daniels. Maybe that's something we'll never figure out if they just take Daniels at number two overall. Uh, but and they're shutting down trade offers. Could that change because of the whole Daniels news news? I, I guess, but I'm, we're just not expecting it. But multiple teams have called. The Raiders have been one of them. We'll talk about them in a little bit as well. Uh, another team we got to talk about is New England Patriots. Uh, nothing new uh, on this first part, but they are open to a trade. But they absolutely need a haul. There's people. Part of me is like, man, if you're open to a trade instead of just taking that quarterback, it just, to me, it really means you're not 100% sold in that quarterback, so that means they really want to trade down. So usually teams in that situation, if they can't do a trade that they want to do, they don't force something. You know, they just take the best player, like the safest pick, the best player available. If they're not in love with the quarterback, they don't take them. So part of me is thinking like that. Maybe they really want to trade down, but it's coming out more and more that, they 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 are they are good with staying put and taking their best player available, which is likely to be a quarterback because how badly they need a quarterback, and they would have to be blown away by an offer, and that really hasn't happened yet. But it's an interesting situation. Um, usually, teams that are really open to trading uh, don't really aren't really in love with somebody at three, and they feel like they can go down and get somebody. So they're really interesting. But a lot of the signs point towards them taking a quarterback, staying put. But that definitely could change in a millisecond. Uh, their QB board, what it sounds like, or what a lot of these rumors are, what teams, other teams think, like what they're predicting other teams would do. Uh, so they're thinking their QB board is Jaden Daniels. And we, it sounds like they like Jaden Daniels a lot, a lot. Then Drake May, then JJ McCarthy. There's some people out there that are saying legit sources. You know, if you're on Twitter, uh, legit draft guys saying that McCarthy is very much in play for that spot. Some people saying it's a little, little smoke. They, they like Daniels and May ahead of J.J. McCarthy. So uh, we're going to trust that. that. that That's their board there. But another team, another situation where I'm sitting there saying, if May's on the board, how could you not? But maybe they're not fully sold on him as they are taking calls. So very interesting. Nothing really new on the Cardinals. You know, they're open to trading down depending on the scenario. So it ha they'll have to be on the clock at four. But the Chargers are, it's sounding like, we knew they would trade. They could trade back, but it's sounding like they really want to trade back. Other teams are saying that they are eager, it was the exact quote, to trade back. Um, you know, because they have, they have a lot of roster spots to fill. They do have a lot of draft picks, but they could also be targeting someone they, are, they feel like they could get in a trade back. So get that player and get picks. Could make sense. I've linked in a trade back multiple times them to JC Latham. I think it's a good fit. I think people were sleeping on him. He's going to go earlier than people think, you know, so could that be the guy They could, they stay put at five and take Joe Alt. Part of me is saying stay, stay put at five. And how could you not take one of those elite receivers? Right? So, cause they badly need it. And that's probably the best player on the board is going to be, you know, one of those players, but sounding more and more like offensive tackle and they are looking to trade back, but 
you have scenarios where actually the teams that are dying to trade up maybe no longer want to trade up because the page will say the Patriots keep three and they take May. That kind of takes some teams off the board for wanting to trade up. Let's say the Giants actually trade with the Patriots and they take May. Same thing. It kind of eliminates some teams from trying to trade up. Um, you know, we'd expect May, obviously Daniels and May to be off the board at this point. Uh, so it leaves as anybody wants to trade up for McCarthy and almost sounding like that's, I don't want to say not likely, but it's less likely than we thought before. Um, so the Chargers, my point is the Chargers may not have a trade partner. And I want, I kind of wonder the idea if they are in love with the guy they plan on trading back for, like a J.C. Latham, and they can't trade back. Do they just take their guy at five? I've, we've seen that multiple times in every single NFL draft, uh, whether you believe it or not. Uh, and another thing, teams, multiple teams believe, like they're expecting Harbaugh and the Chargers to be going after Blake Corum and to be after day one. I'd feel more comfortable with him early day three just because the mileage doesn't break a ton of tackles. Uh, but could the Chargers use a day two pick on him? Let's see, checking if anything else happened. I'm on for St. Brown signed that, signed that big extension before I went to record this. So uh, good for him. Big time slot receiver. But um, yeah, so the Chargers are very interesting. Do they stay put and take the obvious of what they should receiver or do they take what's being talked about an offensive tackle? Do they reach for one? Do they take a surprise one or do they trade back and target one? Um, interesting team, interesting team to watch. I'm wondering again, if we're, the teams that want to go up and get may, you know, they can't anymore. Do they want to? So wondering if teams don't want to go up for a quarterback, but if there's teams out there that want to go up for a uh, offensive tackle, like Joel Alt or one of the receivers, could that team trade with the Chargers? I don't think that's talked about enough there. Uh, next, the giants, uh, trying to trade up. That's uh, common knowledge, you know, uh, obvious news since uh, a couple days ago. Um, and it really sounds like Drake May is their quarterback one. Other teams expect that to be their quarterback one. I think it's a great fit for Dayball's offense. It sounds like they do like Michael Penix Jr. though. I, def I you know, I heard that, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're taking him at six. Not really, not really saying that, but if if they're like in a position to go up and get him in the from the second, or if he's they're in a position to get him in the second, maybe that's a possibility. But I did hear that, and now the McCarthy. Connection is definitely fading away. There's multiple sources that just do not believe McCarthy is in play for the Giants. And I never really bought into that, even though it's kind of, and it could still happen. There's always shocking, you know, surprises, but can't, you can't fully guarantee the draft or predict it. That's why it's a, it's why it's so fun. Um, but I never was really buying into the McCarthy thing. Like I, wouldn't you just rather tr try out Daniel Jones? I know if he's injured, but, or drew lock, uh, take a receiver at that pick. Uh, it's kind of go big or go home at situation at quarterback here. It's like, you know, we're only going to do it if we for sure get a guy, like get a guy, like Drake May. Like th that's kind of my views for the Giants. That's kind of always been my views. So they're trying to go up to three. I, I believe they called for two as well, but division rival and the commanders don't really want to move down. But teams are trading in the draft with division rivals more and more. So that wouldn't be the reason. The reason would be they just don't want to move down. They want, they want to take quarterback. So. Giant, my gut feeling is telling me option A, trade up for Drake May. Option B, stay put at six, take the best receiver available. Uh, next, team kind of in the same boat. It feels, we've known this for a long time. The Vikings need a quarterback. They want to go up and get a quarterback. They've been calling about the third overall pick. Uh, and I haven't heard them calling about the second overall pick. Uh, but they've been calling to go up to three. They've been talking to other teams, and they talked to the Cardinals as well, like a just-in-case scenario, like, our guy's still there, but it really sounds like Drake May's the guy, but it also sounds like like they like J.J. McCarthy, but do they need to trade up? Do they want to trade up for him? Are they good at staying put and seeing if he drops to them? Uh, I've kind of mentioned that over time. Like, I think people got carried away with the trading up for J.J. McCarthy when it comes to any teams or the Giants taking him at um, at pick six. I, I and it, Again, it could happen. I can't guarantee anything, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe that's been blow, hyped up a little too much, but... There's a quote from an AFC executive saying, I think they pull off the trade, the trade up for a quarterback. So you got people that think it's going to happen. You got people thinking that they're not going to offer enough. But right now they're not offering enough. That makes sense because you don't absolutely need to get the deal done today. So why would you offer your final package, your final offer, or the most you can offer today? It doesn't really make any sense. Similar situation with the Justin, Je Justin Jefferson situation, why there's no deal. It's like, why would you offer – everything you would give up today when you have time with the guy still. So I think people kind of overreact from those stuff, those things, but 
and it, it's come out from multiple sources. They don't they don't want to part with 23. They are hesitant to offer 23, 23rd overall pick in their trade package to go up. And at first glance, it's like a little laughable. It's like, all right, you're going to have to at the end of the day. And they could at the end of the day when it comes down to it. But if you think about it a little more, it it kind of makes sense for them not to want to part with or not include that because it's a little early. You don't have to do it right now. But also, other teams trade up all the time without having two first-round picks, and one of their picks is the 11th pick. They get it done all the time using future picks and more mid-round picks. Just It just ends up being more picks. So they can actually do a deal without there being 20, without 23 being in there. But teams are, of course, going to see that they have that and they're going to want that. So at the end of the day, it definitely could be involved and they could give in. But it also tells me they they did that trade with the Texans because they wanted an extra first. They got really good value, I thought, on that trade. And maybe they were targeting someone like, hey, we really want that 23rd pick. There's a guy down there that we really like. We think we can get him down there. Um, this draft is a little top-heavy as well, so we'd rather have that first than the seconds. Um, you know, So there's somebody that they could specifically be targeting Back at 23, could it be a corner? Could it be a defensive lineman, a pass rusher? Um, yeah, I, we've seen Johnny Newton mocked them. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is a fit. Max Melton could be a little sneaky one at first. Another one, Marshawn Neeland, uh, pass rusher, could be a little sneaky. I could see the Vikings liking him as well. Um, you know, So a lot of options there for them if they stay put. But it really sounds like their board is May and McCarthy 1 and 2. Obviously, we're not factoring in any of these quarterback boards with uh, or Caleb Williams, any of these quarterback boards, because teams really aren't considering him because he's he's going to be off the board. He's going to go first. But um, so that's where the Vikings are at. Maybe the most intriguing team to watch on day one. If they stay put at eleven twenty three, I think people are going to be like all that for nothing, all that talk for nothing. But I mean, they got pretty good value with that Texans trade, and it is a top heavy draft. So we'll see what happens there. The Raiders. Trade up for trade uh, for two decline, and they try to trade up to two. And I guess, like I talked about with the Commanders, could could that trade, could that or could that change? Maybe because Daniels doesn't really, Commanders aren't getting great feelings with Daniels and all that. I'd I'd say it could, but I'm not expecting it. But they try to trade up for two, and now it's coming out. They've actually called the Cardinals about trading for four. Now that's something that wouldn't happen before the draft. It wouldn't happen before they're on the clock even. So if the Raiders and the Cardinals or anybody with the Cardinals traded, it is expected, if it's going to happen, expected to happen uh, at pick four when that is on the clock, the clock winding down there. Uh, but they call about four. My question is, for what? I, I find that really intriguing um, because when they call about two, we know for a long time they probably like Jaden Daniels because the Antonio Pierce connection uh, they want a quarterback. They want to, it's kind of a go big or go home scenario with them with quarterback, but they can't get two done. And they've called about four that again, makes it intriguing because they have kind of already determined. And a lot of people are determining that Jaden Daniels is off the board at two. So what are they trading up for? Of course it could be, let's get the, this deal. Most likely this is what it is. Let's kind of get this deal like agreed to before we agree to it, like with the Cardinals. Like if this scenario happens for you and us, like Daniel's dropping down a little bit, Cardinals guy's not there, can we do this trade? So I'm guessing that's kind of what that talk is. But I, I you know, it kind of makes you think like if they can't trade up for Daniels, would they trade up the four for McCarthy or let's say Mays there or uh, maybe a little bit of a wild card do they go up for Joe Alt some talk about teams uh, wanting to put him at right tackle that's what the Raiders need pretty badly seems like a pretty good scheme fit as well so now the Raiders become more interesting and intriguing uh, because it was like two decline for Daniels okay they can't get Daniels let's call about four what's going on here so a couple or quite a few different scenarios that that could mean so um, all these teams becoming very interesting for draft day. Really, every team is, to be honest. Falcons interested in a round one quarterback. That was talked about last week on a CBS mock draft. It was Jonathan Jones, who makes one mock draft a year, and it's usually based off like what he's hearing buzz. So that was interesting. And I'm taking Michael Penix. I just did not agree with that, but the, interesting. And now it's coming out more and more from different sources, legit sources, you know, ESPN sources that. Um, they, they could actually surprise people and take a quarterback in round one. And I, I just think it's full on smoke. I think they want their scaring teams to come up because there's teams 
that know if they want one of the top quarterbacks, they have to go up to the Patriots pick, the Cardinals pick, the Chargers pick. But after that point, if if you didn't go up by then, there's no point. Just wait it out. Kind of talking about the Vikings here. Just wait it out. So the Falcons are out there putting it out that, hey, we might take a quarterback. So now a team's going to go, all right, I guess we do have to trade up ahead of them. And that will push an extra player, non-quarterback, down to them. So uh, to me, it's just classic smoke for that reason, but for the main reason of why. Uh, no one has ever valued a quarterback like the quarterback position. Like It's the most valuable quarter, it's the vo- most valuable position in football, but the Falcons will be the leader in valuing the position in a single offseason ever, paying Kirk Cousins $180 million and then drafting a quarterback in the first round with a top 10 pick. It's just it's contradicting. It doesn't make a ton of sense and it doesn't really help the team right now, obviously. So uh, definitely not buying that. Uh, Many expect them to take Dallas Turner. We've mocked it a ton of times. You think it, fans think it, media thinks it, other teams are expecting it. Lately, I've been mocking Quinion Mitchell. It's just kind of like a bold gut, gut bold feeling uh, of a fit. Um, everything you hear want you know wants you to say like they're gonna take Dallas Turner, um, and it makes a lot of sense. It just teams really don't do what you expect them to do a lot, but it it would be a pretty good fit. Um, so that's kind of what's being expected. But what are the chances it happens? People think high right now, so uh, that's obviously could be like the the number one odds guy for the Atlanta Falcons. Some talk about them possibly trading down. Heard that a little bit. Um, Trade up. Who's going to trade up? The obvious teams that we already talked about that you already know about. Vikings, Raiders, Giants, you know, those teams. Teams that have been mentioned to watch for. Teams that have actually called up. um, Teams that have actually called up that really isn't being talked about a lot. The Colts. My guess would be Brock Bowers or a cornerback. Wild card would be a receiver or pass rusher. I I think it's Bowers or a corner. The Jags. My guess would be one of those big-time receivers or a corner but probably one of those receivers. Uh, skip the Bengals for a second. Rams have looked to call up uh, to they've called the trade up. People are talking about them with Bo Nix just because there's a connection in the front office. Or you know, I don't see it as a fit to me. They definitely wouldn't trade up or take them in the first, in my opinion. Um, I think their offensive tackle hunting actually, or it could be Byron Murphy. There's hearing that they're hearing that he can go earlier than expected. They want to. Try to find some Aaron, an Aaron Donald replacement. That that'd be their best bet, even though it's really not possible. He's arguably the best defensive player ever. Uh, but Murphy is great. Love Murphy. Um, so be one of those two. And then the Eagles, which we kind of figured, um, I'd say a pass rusher or a corner. I heard a a surprise would would uh, be a receiver or Brock Bauer. Some teams think they could be sneaky when it comes to those uh, players at those positions. I would be a little surprised. But going back to the Bengals, there's no official. Um, report that they've actually called to trade up, but they're showing signs of being interested, and it just make, it's a team to watch. It makes a lot of sense, and I mentioned it before too. Um, if J.C. Latham starts to slip, I love that fit, uh, but there's a bunch of right tackles or just tackles in general they can go up and get, so it's a team to watch. From round two, the Commanders, with the load of picks they have, they might need to go up and get a first-round tackle after they take a quarterback second overall, so they make a lot of sense. And I, I think teams that could be sneaky – uh, for one, the Cardinals, you're being, they're being talked about trading back with the fourth pick, and that's possible, either that or staying put. I'm starting to think they stay put, but they also have another pick at 27. Uh, I'd watch for them to trade up there, but they also can be sneaky if they do trade back from four. Do they take that pick? They trade it back to trade back up, similar to what they did last year. And how about the Jets? Not being mentioned at all. What if they actually go up and get the sure thing tackle and Joe Alt for the future? Good situation to kind of learn behind Tyrone Smith and um, you know, take over from there or uh, step up if, if he needs to, because there's you know durability concerns on the Jets' offensive line. So um, they're they're kind of they're a Super Bowl or bust type team. They're trying to build it right now, so they're going to want to go up and get the best players possible. Um, I think the Brock Bowers buzz is starting to die. Doesn't mean they won't take them, but so I they're interesting as as well there. Um, and then next, most teams have Xavier Worthy at receiver four. So uh, I think it was Jeremy Fowler of ESPN said the teams that he's, he's talked to, he's asked the question, who's receiver four? And the player mentioned most was Xavier Worthy. And I kind of talked about that in my last mock, that it wouldn't surprise me at all. 
and it was actually brought up at the combine after he ran that 40, but it was basically teams saying not because of the 40, because we already saw that on tape. He's an explosive playmaker. Like he was actually considered a receiver four by teams, not really by fans and media at that time. And usually stuff at that time is there's less smoke at that time. So uh, very possible, but some teams wouldn't have worthy at receiver four. So it doesn't mean he's going to be the receiver fourth taken. And then the next most guy talked about receiver four is Brian Thomas Jr. And of course, I think there's some teams that probably have Adonai Mitchell, uh, Xavier Leggett, Lad McConkey, uh, player, you know, prospects like that. But these are the guys talked about most, and it's actually worthy more so than Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, some teams have flagged Brian Thomas Jr. medically because of a shoulder injury. I, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it sounds super serious. And another player to talk about, Leatu Latu, who is a big-time impact pass rusher, probably the most polished in this class. Um, really good production. He's a really good scheme versatile edge rusher. And lately, he's kind of, his stock's been falling a little bit, not because of his talent, but because, yeah, I kind of remembering the the neck issue that forced him to medically retire uh, back when he was with Washington. Uh, and some teams have medically flagged and that's kind of we already knew that from the last couple weeks of being talked about more and more but now it came out this was also an ESPN report that uh, most teams some teams have definitely medically flagged them and they're just really not interested in taking them in the first round because it's too much of a risk but most teams are actually not concerned with that injury or his future um, you know some teams a little so most most teams are pretty confident he can play right now obviously I think everybody is some teams are a little worried about long term, but again, most teams actually not concerned. And there's some teams that brought him in and checked him out medically. They gave him that check, and they're like, "All right, let's rank him where his talent says." And they moved him back up their board. So his has been a little bit of roller coaster. Like you probably go high, now he's dropping down, and I was kind of getting ready to have him like slide all the way down the bottom of the first. But with this coming out, if it's true. Boom, like he's going, he's going to go much earlier than I thought then. So he's before it's like much later than I thought, now much more earlier. So it's kind of all over the place with lot to um, the UCLA pass rusher there. Um, now on to some veteran trade candidates. I got a few of them to talk about here. Cortland Sutton, of course, the Broncos said they're not actively shopping. Cortland Sutton teams have multiple teams have called. They don't really plan on trading him. I'm just not taking anything serious anybody says right now, and especially Sean Payton. Uh, he could be telling the truth, or he could be just trying to drive up the price uh, or waiting to see what happens with their first pick You know, in the first round. Maybe, maybe that leans them toward, you know, if they get a right receiver, they'll, t- they'll trade him. Uh, but they don't want teams to know they're taking that receiver, whether it's the first or the second round. Or they don't have a second round pick, but they could definitely gain one. Um, you know, so it, it, it kind of makes sense for them to say, "Hey, we're not trading them," and it being not a hundred percent the truth. Totally makes sense. Um, so I actually think he's a decent shot he can be traded. We kind of have a high, medium, low meter there. I think I put him around medium. Uh, and the team I'm watching is the Steelers. I think it's a really good fit for Arthur Smith's offense. You know, another physical receiver. Um, you know, that, that fits that offense. And, you know, we don't, we know they need a receiver, but we don't mock a receiver. Nobody really mocks a receiver for them at 20 a ton or really at all. Um, and, you know, and they, cause they got to fill offensive line need. It's expected that. And then, you know, could they target a corner specifically an inside corner in the next one? So a team that needs a receiver, we, you know, you're not seeing them taking one, taking one in most mocks the first couple days. So maybe they need to trade for one here. Uh, that really fits, and he's a little more proven compared to the guys around the draft where you'd be willing to take one. So I'd watch for the Steelers. Just kind of fits their motto there. Um, And I think he's very underrated. I think he's a very good receiver. So that's something I'd watch for. And then Brandon Ayuk being a huge one here, uh, I'd actually kind of bump it up a little bit to medium. I think Sutton's a little more likely. But before it was like low chances Ayuk's traded because the Niners have said it multiple times they don't want to, and obviously they don't want to. He's getting better and better, separated better than anyone last year, a very important piece, a very good receiver, again, with some upside still. Um, But if he's not happy, we've seen this show. We've seen this over and over again. If he's not happy, they can't reach a deal. If he doesn't even want to talk about a deal anymore, who knows if that's the case. Um, I I think it's possible. And I've actually recently heard they're a little more, yesterday, I heard this, they're a little more likely to trade him because before it was low. They're a little more likely, but they're asking too much for teams. And that includes a first-round pick. I don't think that's too much, but given leverage, given the situation, 
And guys went for undervalue like crazy recently in trades. So, um, you know, what's going to happen there? But I think he's most definitely worth the first round pick. If it's a later first round pick or even like back end in the middle, I think he's worth more. But again, factor in leverage. Um, Jags and Colts, two AFC South teams I'm looking for. There's rumors about the Jags trying to trade up for a receiver. If they can't get that done, will they go for Brandon Ayuk or will they prefer going for Brandon Ayuk? Um, and then the Colts, Colts trying to make a splash trade, apparently with Legereus Sneed. Uh, they have, they have some spending money still. Could they make a move for a big time receiver? And then people talking about this receiver, that receiver for the Colts. I mean, Brian from the draft, Brian Thomas Jr. is one of them. And it's to me, that's like another Michael Pittman type player. Like these, these receiver and I, you know, these receivers that are get brought up, like don't make a ton of sense for me. Like I, I need a guy that can mesh well, that can compliment, uh, Michael Pittman and Josh Downs and Ayuk is that guy. Like those are three different receivers that are perfectly together on an offense. Like it's perfect. So um, I can see the Colts and they're yeah. Colts are usually not a team that like signs these new additions, like these big splash additions. They'll more so try to trade for them. So I think that makes sense as well. Um, this has gone from like no chance to low to medium. We'll see if it happens uh, on day one or even day two of the NFL draft. Again, with some of these, Teams maybe wait and see if they what they get, what they don't get, who if they missed on a guy, and that could spark something. Um, if the Ayuk's not traded in and, and the Niners at pick thirty one take a receiver, we're going okay. Is something happening? So day one actually could tell us, um, or this could happen before day one or early day one. I'm you know so it's gonna be crazy, but. Yeah, here, here are the veteran trade candidates that I'm looking for. Of course, there could be smaller guys that are traded, but um, Cortland Sutton, more likely than what we've heard Sean Payton say. I think the Steelers are the team to watch. Brandon Ayuk, it's, it's not a high chance it happens, but I think it's increasing. Jags and Colts are teams I'm watching. And then other ones, a little lower chances. Marshawn Lattimore was brought up a bit uh, you know, around free agency. Maybe it happens now for a team that missed on a corner in the draft. Saints want to clear space and get prepared for the future. Uh, Patrick Sertan has been brought up a bit. Um, I don't know if that would be a wise decision, not really counting on it. And T. Higgins and the Bengals plan on him being part of the team this year. But teams lie all the time. Do they draft the receiver so does it change? and Or do they get a crazy offer for Higgins? But that's where I'm at. Uh, with the veterans that could shake up the do we have like an AJ Brown type situation we'll see we'll be live during day one with all those reactions Pete's AJ Brown reaction was an absolute classic during the live stream but uh, make sure you join us on our channel turn notifications on follow us on Twitter as well very important turn notifications on there GLD shop liquid IV those are our sponsors code goat for a percentage off that's gonna do it thanks for watching goodbye